champion. Almost half a second off the world record. He has flown home. He's a fish. He's the best kid I've ever coached. And believe you me, his prime is yet to come. He will be breaking records. Retirement? Are you kidding me? We're training harder than ever. He told me the other day, Coach, I can get out of the pool, dry off, and nobody's ever going to see these abs again. Or I can suit up, get in the pool, set world records, and change this world forever. And that's what we're going to do. Swimming with two legs? <laughs> That's like training wheels. TJ's a thing of beauty. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. When I'm not freestyling my way to nautical dominance, I'm fixing your ATM. I'm TJ and this is another episode of TJ's Tips. On this episode of TJ's Tips, we're gonna be working with electricity, so you'll wanna make sure that you're dried off to avoid electric shock. At ATMEquipment.com, one of the most common questions we get is how to check your power supply for voltage and how to check sensors on your dispenser to ensure that they're working. Today, I'm going to show you how. Your first step is to invest in a nice digital multimeter. There are several types of multimeters and I would suggest getting a more expensive one because they do their job well. Multimeters have a lot of settings on them and they can be a little confusing. You'll want to set it to a DC voltage, which is a V with a solid line and a dotted line below it on your meter. I'm going to show you how to check your power supply first. The first step of checking your power supply is to ensure a proper ground. You can do this by connecting an alligator clip to the black probe, the negative probe, on your multimeter and connect the other end of the alligator clip to the chassis of your machine. Or you can use that same probe and ground straight off of the power supply on the black cables. The power supply from your ATM converts 110 volts alternating current to 24 volts, 12 volts, and 5 volts direct current. Ensure that your power supply is turned on, properly grounded, and slowly insert the red probe into each cable coming off the power supply. You will see your voltage on your meter go to 24 volts, 12 volts, and 5 volts. That ensures that your power supply is emitting the proper voltage. If cleaning your sensors off on your dispenser didn't get it working, I would suggest checking the sensors with your multimeter. Sensors on your dispenser are infrared, which means you can't see if they're working with the naked eye. You're gonna have a send sensor, which is on the bottom, and your receive sensor, which is on the top of each pair of sensors. Your send sensor will have a constant voltage, meaning it won't change at all. 1.145 volts. Your receive sensor will change when it's blocked. Right now, it's at 0.16 of a volt, and as I block it, it will jump up to three volts. That ensures that your signal is being blocked and that your sensors are working. You can also check your power getting to your sub-assemblies, meaning your dispenser or your printer, by properly grounding the meter and checking the voltages just as you did coming out of your power supply. As you can see, checking the voltage on your power supply and your sensors is a pretty simple process. If you have any questions, however, please feel free to give us a call. Thanks, and this has been another episode of TJ's Tips. We got records to set. Check on. What do we think we got those fins on you for? I'm trying, Come on. coach. Save your breath. You want any endorsements? You're not going to get it at this speed. 
Let's go, let's go. 